Hey guys, I'm Bob from the game Brugel, and in this video I'm going to give you a quick overview of how our player animations are set up. So these are first person um, anime camera animations really, and um, we've set these up in a way that works really well for me and I thought I might as well share it with the internet. So um, most of our animations, actually probably all of them at this point, are Mixamo animations, so at Mixamo.com you can go on that website and um, just upload your mesh and then download animations for your mesh from it. It's not always perfect, but it looks good enough for our purposes because a lot of the stuff happens in the dark anyway. So um, we've got this German soldier guy here and we've got a whole bunch of animations for him that we got from Mixamo, like say here he's dying I think, here he's getting shot <laughs> and so forth. Um, and well, for our player character, a lot of the times things will happen to him that will also require an animation so what we are doing is using the same animations and then we just attach a camera to the head of the German soldier. So if you look at the skeleton that we have here, I made one adjustment to it. I added a socket to it. So you can just right click it, add socket, and um, I added one called head socket. And this is the point where the camera will be attached to. So let me bring over my blueprint that I've got for the German soldier. So um, there's a skeletal mesh here and um, we use an animation blueprint and in an animation blueprint that's where all the magic happens obviously uh, but I've attached a camera to the viewport and um, I did some quick settings in the construction script where I activate that camera uh, based on the variable camera soldier I set the visibility of it and I set the visibility of the mesh so what will happen is if we make let me open this thing up here if I um, set the value for camera soldier to true, it basically just becomes a camera. And you can already see how it's animated following the item animation from the soldier. It's moving a little bit, which is kind of cool. So if I turn this off, it's just a regular soldier and the animation will just, you know, play on the soldier. So it's the same animations that we use for both our player and the German soldiers in the game. Um, you know, it saves some space, I guess. So, um, yeah, that's how it's set up. You click on the camera and there's a sockets uh, area where you can just type in head socket and then it will basically um, attach it to this thing here relatively. So um, in my game I can now spawn soldiers. Uh, let me show you. Say, um, where are my soldiers? Here it is. I, I put a soldier in there um, and now it's a soldier. If I put it on camera soldier it becomes a camera. If you don't know how that works, well, that's really basic stuff, but you basically just click here and you make it editable and so forth. Actually, if you don't know that stuff, you probably know what a construction script is. So a construction script is a script that only runs in the editor while you're making changes. It runs whenever you compile, for example. Anyway, I'm sure you know what an event graph is or else <laughs> you're, this is already going to be way overhead, this overview. Um, all right, so let me bring up the dark stable level and we have a good and a bad ending and um, basically I'm gonna work with the bad ending so this is part of our bad ending. I'm not gonna spoil the ending for you guys don't worry about it I'm just gonna show you an animation that happens when you walk into a certain trigger so um, all right I've set oh this guy is the one I dragged in let me delete it so there's this trigger area here and when I walk into that trigger um, we call this event um, it's called bad ending so let me show you real quick what it does. So when I press play, I'm going to do it like this. When I walk into the trigger, doesn't matter what angle I'm using, the game basically goes into this animation, this dying animation that you were just looking at earlier. Well, it's not a loop, I need to turn on the loop. Um, let me do it from a different angle. Oh, oh, I'm dying. There you go. So it'll work from every angle. Um, how do I, you know, make these really cool seamless animations? Well. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process. So the bed ending is triggered. We disable the input because else the player will just keep running around whenever stuff happens. Um, so I'll just zoom in so you can see how it's actually done. All right, moving on. Then we store our player camera into a variable, um, just you know, so we can get back to it if we need to afterwards. Since these animations are for the endings, I will not have to go back to it. But, eh. I just copy paste stuff sometimes from other blueprints because we do this stuff a lot. I actually might turn into a macro, but 
I mean, yeah, there, there's too much customization to do that. Anyway, so once we've stored the camera somewhere, we teleport the soldier camera to the player location. So this is a macro that I wrote. Let me open this thing up. So in this macro, all we do is basically we spawn one of the German soldiers. We turn into a camera soldier. Uh, we set the value so it's exactly at the same position where the player's camera would be. Um, and then we output the camera soldier so that we can set our camera soldier variable to it so that we know where that camera soldier is at all times. All right. Then we do a set view target with blend. So what happens is, okay, you're walking into the trigger. You just spawned this invisible German camera dude in front of you. Now we want to take your camera as the player and blend it into the camera of the German dude so that you don't really see, you know, any hiccups or any non-smooth um, transitions happening. So this will nicely blend it in there. 0 0.2 seconds is perfectly fine. If you put it at zero, it will just still, you know, any mistake that you have in, in, in the positioning will still be visible at that point. So if you put it at 0 0.2, nobody will even notice that the camera is being blended. All right. Um, and the camera soldier variable is used for the target here um, and the controller for the view target. So at this point, um, the game will put the the viewport camera on the camera soldier. Um, so the player's camera doesn't really matter anymore and it's still where you left it, okay? And you know, if you need it back, you can always get it from this variable. That's why we set it. All right, and then we play the animation. Um, normally it will run automatically, but I need to run on cue. So I, I wrote a little script for that. And what we're doing is in here is we cast to um, an animation blueprint for the German soldier. You can get it by getting the anim instance. I don't know why they're called animation. Sometimes I can't find it because it's anim and not animation, but you get the anim instance, then you can cast to it and you can start the animation. If you don't know how casting works in blueprint, again, this is gonna be <laughs> over your head. It's just a quick overview for people who have some idea of how blueprint already works. Um, so let me show you real quick what the animation blueprint looks like. I actually just went with a state machine. There would have been other ways to do it, but um, I, I like the state, state machine feature. It's really nice and clean. So the way it works is entry is just, you know, when the thing is running and um, the first state is idle. And if you double click on your state, you can basically, you can drag in these animations and attach them to the animation post. Actually, you can do really cool stuff like, um, like blending. Um, if you, this way you can blend A and B and you can even put a variable on there so that, you know, it's gonna only take like 10% of blend A and 10% for blend B and you can finturb. Um, or lerp things, you know, together in a nice blending way. Anyway, it doesn't really matter here right now. <laughs> but um, we get the idle, and um, these are the transitions. And if um, this result becomes true, it will basically do the transition. So if you have no idea how state machines work, well, that's basically what it comes down to. You have this different states like idle and zoom in here, stable player. Um, and these transitions all, you know, have to become true in order for something to happen. And it's really cool. You can ho hover over it and see what needs to become true for it to happen. So um, let's see, we're working with bad ending. Yep. So um, whenever this variable is equal to bad ending and transition to animation, which is basically what I used to posit the, the animations in the beginning, when both of those become true, you can answer, enter the transition. So um, nothing really happens here until um, that event is triggered. And then we go here and we basically run the bad ending die animation. There you go. All right. Um, so all of this works in conjunction with the event graph of the blueprint, the animation blueprint. Again, if you don't know how animation blueprints work, just look it up. I'm not going to explain all that stuff here. Um, basically, this is the start animation event that we call, and there you go. Um, yeah. Now, one final cool thing that is actually really convenient for me working this way is um, Sometimes I've got different ones that I want to blend into each other. For example, in this case, I want to do an armed walk, then I want to turn 90 degrees, and then I want to charge. Um, in this one here, um, I want the player first to go to the kneeling animation, and as soon as that is done, go into the prey animation. So I'll quickly show you how that works. Um, I have an animation progression, and I've made sure that these transitions are, if animation progression is zero, we enter that transition. If animation projection is not zero, we go back to good ending. And good ending is a conduit. It really doesn't do anything. It's basically just a pause. Um, if you click on it, it basically can enter animation. Yes, it can always enter the animation. So whenever you come in here, it's either going to go to kneeling or pray. 
unless none of these things is true, in which case uh, we have done some really weird stuff because it's never going to happen with this code. Anyway, so you get into good, good ending, you go to kneeling, and if we open that animation, I made a notification, a notify. You can just do that by right-clicking Add Notify, and it's called Last Frame. Now, all these notifications that you put in there, it's actually really cool how they did that because um, all of those turn into a, uh, events for your event graph. So let me quickly compile that here. I don't think it changed anything, but you never know. Um, so, you know, when animation progression is zero, we go to kneeling. When it becomes one, we go to prey. So all we need to do to go from kneeling to prey is turn that thing to one, basically. It will go back to good ending and immediately go to prey in one, um, in one tick. So opening up the event graph, um, here you go. So add and notify last frame. That is that notification that you can put in any animation. You just put it at the end. And when it gets triggered, it will set animation progress from the state that's right now to the next state. So if it's zero, it becomes one. If it's one, it becomes two and so forth. Plus plus is pretty common in programming. Um, and yeah. So whenever I just want to have a progression of animations this way, all I have to do is put that thing at the end. Um, you know, so. It's, um, well, it's 11 minutes. I think that's more than enough of me showing off how the animations work. It's pretty cool. Um, if you got questions, just leave them in the comments. And um, hope you enjoyed this video and it's helpful for you in some way. Bye-bye.